Okay. From the other angle, the significant contact came yes, from yeah, lawyer. Okay, I'm looking at the back. Now, <laughs> now, 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 I will not coach in a compromised league. <laughs> that's why you haven't coached a better team. A league that oh, the no, FA that president. Why you have, no, that's, so no that's why you have not coached. That's no better team. It was a compromised league. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Marlem Go Podcast. We're back again. The guys are here. Coach Christopher Nimli is here, my friend. All correct. All better. <laughs> <laughs> and his good friend Ali Gay. Ah, ah. <laughs> Jimmy, you know. <laughs> Jimmy, you know. What is ah, ah. Situ is here. I choose you as well. Ah, <laughs> guys, welcome back to the show. Listen, uh, today on the show, we are looking back at what ah, You don't was. introduce Achu. I said Achu, 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 Achu is here. Achu is here. He doesn't ah, have a signature ah, sound, so... <laughs> He just are true. What well, a guy they wear black, so he they, they wear, black. He, with a black background. Oh, so if we don't look well, we'll see Listen. the man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I'm fair. <laughs> um, but guys, uh, listen. Today we are going to talk Champions League. What a midweek of Champions League football! The first leg matches. Oh my goodness! And all the games are still perfectly hanging in the balance. This is what the English people would like to call tantalizingly close. It's what it is now. Heading into those second leg matches. Real Madrid, Man City served as a classic three-all draw. Uh, then there is Arsenal and Bayern Munich, two-all draw. Barca shocked everyone by going to Paris Saint-Germain and winning by three goals to two. They didn't shock me, though. They didn't shock you? No. I said You were the one who said, so yeah, win. that's true. Uh, and then Atletico with a slight advantage uh, going into that second leg against uh, Dortmund. And I think that's, that, that goal, that consolation goal that Halle scored might make the difference. So we'll do that today on the episode. And a lot of you have also been asking us to read some of the comments. So today on the show, we'll read some comments from some of the previous episodes. Uh, some of them fancy, some of them not, for, not so fancy. They are not coming to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, the people. They are, they, are, ah. they are called cookies. <laughs> cookie. <laughs> ah, you people have been overcooking us too much. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ah. Cookies, so, somebody cookies. said, said no, on the co- look, cookies with ingredients. Uh, <laughs> last week we had um by the way, apologies for the truncated um episode of the Kudus and, and, and building the team around Kudus. It was a bit of a mistake in the upload. We apologize for it. It was yeah, it was Achu's fault. Yeah, Achu has already apologized. Yeah, he was talking too much. This is why, friends, you should have allowed me to finish Danike in that room before coming here. See, you confess to his school. Yeah, so we recognize it. Uh, so we apologize for that. But we, first of all, we really appreciate you guys because right now, like on the average now, each episode, is, it, it's averaging around 10K views. Yeah, yeah, so that's amazing. Incredible. And last week, US we now. we uploaded three videos. Uh, the Kudis one had like 10K. The running has like almost 8K. Yeah, then there was Champions another one, right? League. The Champions League has, I think, about 4K or so. So that's we a lot. That. Keep watching, share, subscribe, liking the video. Share the link. We appreciate share and link. share, share the, the link. link. Thank quick, you. Quick. And, uh, you know, uh, put the notification Shoot. bell on. Um, so, so that, that when we post you here, ta <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But uh, I said, before we get into all the Champions League, we'll read some of your comments. Those of you who have been leaving the comments, we appreciate them. Okay. Leave the comments the under the post. Okay. The Kudus episode like this from just last week alone there are, were 84 comments Brilliant. under that post okay 254 likes Brilliant. that's a lot right yeah. no thumb down so we appreciate that thank you uh all right cool but i've got some select messages from that one i'll take some other comments from the other episodes and then i just tell the guys so this is feedback this is not to attack anybody or but we just want to appreciate and see where you guys are coming from and whether we agree or not with what you say. Because obviously some of you come and you come and disagree. We can disagree with the disagreement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we, this year we say no greed give anybody. No greed give anybody. No give anybody. Okay. And uh, I've selected a few of them. Uh, okay. Uh, and to be fair, lots of them have been very positive. All right. Lots of positive comments. Um, Lord Chamanda says, I always wait to hear Coach Nimili speak. I love him from Nigeria. Um, uh, is, he, is, he, is he a man or a woman? He's a man. He's a lord. But it's genuine love. No, okay. yes. you cannot be loving a man like that. <laughs> I like him. 
canon law. <laughs> what is that? What is that? He says, we don't trust boys. I don't trust. <laughs> God, That's what I wanted to be sure. If he's a woman, then I'll love back. You no, understand? no, no. His yeah. name is Lord Commander. Lord Commander. Yes. I like you. So like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you see the, 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 the note on which I'm starting. Positive comments, right? Yeah. Uh, Isaac Obing, he says, I like DK. He makes very compelling arguments backed with justification and references. A top, top guy. He will go far. Champ. Oh, my guy. <laughs> I credit that, you. I uh, and this one says for love to she says, Coach Nimli is too honest. Too honest, too yeah, honest. Too honest. It's always been my That's brother. not a compliment. <laughs> it's always been my big, my, uh, uh, my, I don't know, but it's a tag on me. I, yeah. I, when it's A, I don't know how to massage the A. Yeah. I have to say, bam, bam, bam. And move on. <laughs> Fasasi Ahmed says, I always wait for your podcast to drop every weekend. I love you guys from the UK. We'll keep seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll keep seven. seven. We'll speaking keep seven. of which, last week, I met a guy inside the mail call who came up speaking to me in the UK accent. Oh my God. I, I love your show. I love your podcast. I said, okay, thank you. And then the wife was with him and the wife says, oh, so you're the guy. <laughs> so you're the guy. You guys have been taking my husband's time. Oh, <laughs> it's so, right. it's, it's it's right. Right. It's yeah. so random. Yeah. I'm like, oh. which part of the UK they were from? I can't tell. These days, eh? uh-huh. people can believe in you. Ireland. Ghana. Ireland. Liverpool, Scotland, Manchester, and then they'll be sounding like they live in the U- in London or New but, York. But what's your point? It's UK. It's I say UK. accent. No. What is his point? It's the accent. Uh, this guy. It's sometimes... the accent. <laughs> <laughs> what is his point? What is his point? Because last UK week, is UK, bro. Where the, the, because some ever since somebody take do me, I've been suspicious <laughs> of them. <laughs> the first thing you do, I'm like, they do matter. Yes. It be, it be, yeah, woman, woman. It be woman, you, I don't want to tell the story. So you okay. must tell you. <laughs> Charlie, quick. Uh, okay. Now, let's get to some more serious uh, comments. Okay. Some more serious. Someone had an issue with our argument over the building the team around Kudus. That's right. All right. And this is from Conf- Confo Edu. Confo Edu says, what is so hard to understand about building a team around one player? Every team needs a talisman, and Kudus easily fits that bill. Xavi and Iniesta were legendary for Barcelona, and even then, Barca's game was always elevated by one man, and one man only. A star-studded Madrid was always inspired by their own legendary talisman. Zidane in the 206 World Cup is a prime example of building a team around a player. In the current Black Stars team, I would have nominated Partey as a player to build a team around. But this is obviously impossible with his age and injuries. Kudus is easily the next in line. Kudus is the only Black Stars player who has anything that remotely resembles an elite mentality. And that is what you need from your main man and your talisman. Moreover, chemistry is more important in football than skills. And Kudus has great chemistry or relationship with players like Isaku, Nyama, Kamaldin, and Osman. Now put these boys together. And they will play for each other. They all look up to him. So why not just build a team around him? It makes perfect sense. Kudus clearly elevates Ghana's team. I can't disagree with this guy. Nobody. He makes a lot of valid points. He does. Nobody Even does. if you disagree, you can see the wisdom in Yes, exactly. Okay. I remember very well that. I think when we, you listen to all of us, nobody is saying, don't build a team around him. Yeah. Our biggest problem is that until we get the team to function as a unit properly, where everybody is functioning, mm-hmm. then you can now say, okay, within the set, he's our main man. Yeah. But if there is a team undergoing transition. We've not even figured out how the transition will be. The coach learning about him. So. Then, so it will, it will take a bit of time. Okay. That's a good one. Now, we're going to go to this, okay? <laughs> Tolu Wani. Tolu Wani. Almost for day. Tolu Wani. Almost for message is coming. Yeah. He says what? Tolu Wani says. Yes. Since Fentio collected African games money, uh-huh. <laughs> he has refused <laughs> to say the truth about Mustafa Yusuf or Okroku. <laughs> As for Daniel, his constant agenda to be against Coach Nimli is unfair. It's very true. 
What do you mean? Which part is true? My part or Daniel's part? Everything he said. So far. <laughs> <laughs> right he's, notes. He's not that no. He says pencil can send as many positions as he wants. We all know the truth, and we know that these men aren't far from the truth. Time always does its thing. June isn't far away. <laughs> it's like he's foretelling that there will be disaster in June. Man, like Nimili has been preaching. As for that one, it's a time bomb. <laughs> Whether he like it or not, it will explode. <laughs> if Coach Nimili liked the previous message, let's see if he likes this next one. <laughs> let it come. This is from Seth Kofi Amankwa. Mm -hmm. He says, what better team has Coach Nimili coached before? Oh, Seth, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, you have asked a question. <laughs> okay, so I want to know. He so, says, so, 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 Coach Nimli, if not for anything that has given Ghana Lawrence Atizi, ah, it ends there. Coach, you have not answered. I've question. answered the question. And, and you gave hey, us hey, this Get team Nimli. to answer the question. No. He said, "What? Which he said, he said, what he said, team have you coached he, before?" He didn't talk about which place have you worked with before. And which I'm place saying have you that I gave. You see, you don't want me to go after our game. <laughs> no, he said that which which, 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 which team? Is which there, team have you coached? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no that's not a question. Okay. Which, better that, which, which better team? Thank you. Which better? No, it's not easy. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. None of us here argue the fact that our league is a highly compromised league. Your point is. My point is, you coach coach never will not league. coach in the compromise. <laughs> That's a very good answer. That's <laughs> all. So, so Seth's, Seth's point is still valid. No, but that's what I'm saying that I will not coach in the compromise league. <laughs> that's why you haven't coached a better team. A league that oh, the no. FA that president... That's why you have, no, there's so no that's why you have no coach. There's the... no better team. Because a compromise league. <laughs> the FA president is on record to have said that when uh, 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 there were evidence that people had been exchanged, those who were doing the fix man, they were calling him. What about, the tier, what about the tier below? The what? What about the tier below? But how about if the FA is not team, why would he go a tier below? Look, I will not coach Division 1 or Division 2 or Division 3. I would rather concentrate. You are a standard on, premier coach. I would rather concentrate on the juvenile. You football. are a professional, stand, proper coach. You need a proper league to ah, coach, no you, not any uh, highly compromised league. And <laughs> Very soon, they would, okay. they, they, the matches will start. You see those matches. The last eight, six matches they will start. Six nil. Yes. Okay. I have one more message. This one says. um, Ever since Fencho did that hairstyle, he has been very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that the man doesn't like your hairstyle? Or did, or did, I mean, for me, I'm happy. Jealous, I, I suspect that I'm happy that that like this. Who is saying? Who is saying? His person. name is Josh Akwe. So he's a he's a guy. Yes. Look, Somebody's wife likes the hairstyle. From the way <laughs> George, the <laughs> from the way Akwe <laughs> has spoken, <laughs> he's annoying. From the way Akwe has spoken, it seems you have left. His bracket. Oh, oh, I'm sure he's the Lord. Yeah. Is my he's, he's, Are you bold? This is my clan. <laughs> Speaking of Zicho, <laughs> Chris Style 2011. He says, Zicho doesn't know anything about this subject. Sadly, he isn't making any useful submissions. Which subject was that? Goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you see, I've said it before that see, when somebody speaks, two <laughs> things can be true. Two things. <laughs> it's either you are not. Like you're not, your knowledge about the subject matter is so low you can't comprehend what the person says. Exactly. Yes. Or what the person is saying. It's too deep. deep. It's too deep. deep. You can't. Or what the person is saying is just nonsense. Yes. I don't say nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak nonsense. All those who are watching can comment that when I speak, it's full of sense. Okay. So maybe the problem is you. So it's come up. Come up. Come up. Come up. Uh, to what's more. that classic breakup like? It's it's, it's me. not me. It's not you. Yeah. <laughs> so you step it up some more. Yeah, like yeah. Speaking I feel of, you. I feel you, but step yeah, it up some more. Speaking of Sicho, it's just it's like the people just came in in droves. The comment right under that Chris style comment is from Benna six one four. Yeah. His name is what? Benna. He's about Benna. to ban somebody. <laughs> he says Sicho thinks he's the only one making sense. Ama. <laughs> I when I when I speak when I speak I absolutely believe in what I say. When I show up, or then we fail, I fail. Um, 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 yeah, 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 if the arm where you are, yeah, that yeah, way you know it's yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry for your pains. Sharon, I'm one. He said, 
Fancy they vex me pass. <laughs> Why is he being too sarcastic right now? Mm, chill. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck, man? Hey, be real. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> man, it's a podcast. Some of you are too uptight. Look. Uh, Julius yeah. Jeva says, mm-hmm. is this to you? He said, actually, the uh, analysis check like he must. Make it simple like the others. <laughs> 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 Bro, I've had all school run out while bomb power mass. What do you mean, your calculation? Yeah, yeah, that's not a matter with he must. He must have a call. Oh, and here's another one. And we see, he said, Fent must be blind. How can you say Pogba was not impactful? Please, I'm blind. I'm the only one wearing glasses. <laughs> no, Can't you see? If I remove right, I can't oh, this see. One, not inside, not yeah. inside, this one, not inside. This one. your lens, no oh, inside. Me, they need them. Pa. One is flex, quick. You know, speaking of Ghana, it's like, it's like the Ghana subjects are the most divisive. I've, under the, um, you know, after the friendly match, mm-hmm. yeah. the episode coach wasn't here for when we yeah. reviewed what yeah. we learned from the the um the friendly games that Otto came to play. There were some uh interesting comments there. A lot of them were asking where Coach Nimili was. Uh, I think we answered that question last week. Uh, but there were some other very interesting ones. Uh one here says, um, is this from Maxwell Akuma up here? He says, Sucho, you do all very calm, but deep analysis of the games. This is somebody who understands you. Like, you see, you don't have to say, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. It's somebody on the same wavelength. Yeah, somebody too, you don't understand. So you talk, say, yeah, talk. Like, somebody too, you say, come Nobody on, small. Come yeah. on, small. Uh, Nyanko Bryce says, damn, I really like Daniki. We have been giving a philosophy. So damn, let's not complain. Damn, and you say, damn, 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 damn. There, no, man. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy don't be correct. You won't, you won't talk the thing. <laughs> you won't talk, talk, bro. Yeah. Won't talk. Uh, and the same, Josh Akwe. Ah, Josh. Ad- uh, of course. He, Josh got the, pre- the, the, the previous the, one. Yeah. Don't you deal with me, no? You do it. He's the same, Josh. You say what? I they come from top la. He say what? He say or a teacher. It's very surprising seeing that he apply context to everything else. Except when it comes to Ateta. Yes. You see that. This, this, this was, was, was the was the apply context to Otwado, but when it came to Ateta, Ateta at the beginning, you never applied context. You say you were universally bashing him. I don't think he's talking about your take on it. This clearly is someone who has followed Daniki. For no, a, but so, there was context again. This is so how I use, so use, use, use Citro's words. There was context, but you see, when, you know. when, when you're talking to football fans, yeah. And people who have interest in the subject, they consume things very emotionally. Yeah. If I'm talking to Arsenal fans, a Man United fan will be able to properly articulate what I'm saying and Facts. understand the context. But mm. if I'm talking to Arsenal fan and it's in the negative, on TSC, he will take it very emotionally. Yeah, this first position will be to... Thank you. It means you don't like him. Then it's fine. It's fine. That's what I, <laughs> I want think this <laughs> was <laughs> in response. So this will be under the produce Otoado conversation, right? Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. under Otoado, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is Otoado conversation. So he's calling this back... This was after his two friends. So he's calling back to your position on Ateta from the beginning. Yes. Mm-hmm. When he first got the job. Yes. But in the submission, I made I made yeah. reference to Ateta. Yeah, and I, I, made think, a yeah. di- the, the, I, yeah. I actually made difference. I remember. The reason I remember. why I said Ateta and the reason why I'm seeing Otuadu. I think mm. I remember you, you were... No, you are misunderstanding me. He is referring to how you did not back Ateta in the beginning. Yes, I did not back Ateta in the beginning because I said Arsenal had a budget to go and hire a more experienced manager. I yeah. said Black Stars don't have that budget. So right. my only choice is to pick somebody who, who is not experienced good. and who with it. It's it's okay. Okay. second fellow. Don't go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> um, more here. Uh, this one says, um, great episodes. That was the other one. I was encouraged by Nigeria's game, especially. This is <laughs> the question of what he we watched, learned from those two. He watched. He watched no, that. I like this guy. Oh, that coach, ten minutes. That ten minutes pieces of. He of, said, of and just watched ninety minutes football. He yes. Watched him. Oh. Eh? Did you watch the game with him? His name is Mister Fundamental. Two oh, four Charlie, seven. So fixing the fundamentals, ah, this right? Is somebody who knows his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who knows his stuff. <laughs> he says. <laughs> If you missing key players such as Kudu, Spencer, Ashimira, and Jiku, the pro- progressive play was impressive. We have seen, you. We mm. have seen them play. 
<laughs> somebody said that episode somebody said next time coach doesn't show up take the show to his house <laughs> <laughs> so we should have the house miss <laughs> 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 Uh, and this one, this one, there's like a lot of people have things to say about Danny K. Pao. This one says, uh, Danny K is an amazing guy. He will criticize Man U's coach for not performing and then praise, uh, praise Otto Ado as if he's done something in coaching armor. And he's always ready to defend the clueless effie. Did he say same for Chris Hutin when he had the job? Did I say same for Chris Hutin? Yes. I'll back every blast that. See, they think they have a shan. Don't add the hard to challenge the Champions League. Tell me. Tell me. They have a shan. What are you talking about? Let's talk about the Champions League. Plenty to talk about from Champions League. Do you think they gave Blasters 100 million to go and do something? I won't do something with it. What about Anthony? You say that he's... Who they gave Blasters 100 million to do what? 100 million to fix fundamentals. The money we've given to them as a country over the years. You know, Richard. They have never brought us anything proper. You know, Richard, 100 million. Ah! You know, Even under Keto Kroku, World Cup money, you know, money. he passed 100 million. You know, million. Million. I go, I go, World Cup, how much do And we'll get back to you on them. Uh, we enjoyed reading them a lot. We really enjoyed reading them a lot. But um, we are going to switch to Champions League football now. Okay? We are going to switch to Champions League football. And guys, listen, I don't know about you, but this midweek Champions League quarterfinal fixtures probably one of the greatest we've seen in the history of the Champions League in a single round. Not just in terms of the sheer number of goals scored. And speaking of goals, the 18 goals that were scored in that round is the highest uh, quarterfinal round match uh, number of goals scored in a single round quarterfinal game since 2011. The last time we scored as many as 18 goals in a single quarterfinal round was back in 2011. So you're looking at give or take 13 years uh, since that happened. So clearly it's been very exciting. And we will break those games into uh, into pieces for you with an eye on the return leg. So listen, um, there's an obvious one place to start, which was possibly the best game of the night. Real Madrid 3, Manchester City 3. I don't know about you, but the technical ability of each of the goals, every single time they scored a goal, I always thought it was better than the previous one. And then another one pops up. Out of all the six goals, there's nothing you can say about any single one of those goals that's not going to be only great things about those goals. Now, though, it is tantalizingly poised for the return legs. Okay. Situ, I'm going to give you that game and hey. say, listen, bro, it was thoroughly enjoyable. And I think that we all expected that it would be a very competitive game. But still, I was very surprised by the nature of the game in itself. <laughs> Yeah, um, listen, I was very surprised by, by we knew you we were going to see goals, not too sure where I thought we were going to see six goals. Yeah. And the way the pendulum was swinging at some point, City took the lead, Madrid came to take the lead, and still regained the lead, and Madrid equalized. And the quality of goals that we saw were brilliant. Even for the, the Kamavinga goal that people are going to say is a deflected shot, it's just the way he carried the, the ball. Yeah. Got that body move and get, got away from Grealish to open up that space for himself. That was brilliant. You, you need, you need, Players who have got a certain level of grade, certain level of ability to be able to make that happen. The Rodrigo goal was also great. The, the through ball from Vinicius Jr. to him. Density's goals. All those three goals. Bernardo Silva was sharp and thinking. I thought Luning could have done, still done better with a free kick. Then Foden's goal. Then, uh, then um, Vadio's goal. But in between that is, is the quality of coaching. The little things that coaches will change to get advantages to themselves. Mm. And the very things that football fans will sit home and watch and be asking questions about when you look, when you look into the fine details and the fine margins, you can understand why some coaches made the decision. Because you were thinking that when City are going to play against Real Madrid and Benabal, and there's no Carl Walker, then Vinicius is going to have a field day on the left. Yeah. Bacalo do play Vinicius down the middle and pull Rodrigo down on the left, and Bellingham coming in around Vinicius as a second striker or coming in as a number ten, or at times Bellingham going wide for Rodrigo to come in as a second striker. And I think more a lot of that was what Madrid were going to do off the ball. Because off the ball, Rodrigo's ability to track back and his work rate at times is better than what Vinicius would offer. Uh. And you want to leave Vinicius high up the pitch because when there is that counter-attack, you don't want him to start from deep. You want him to have a room closer to the final third so that when he gets the ball, he can run a defender. We saw 
couple of times where he was winning fouls in those places. City are brilliant with it. When you're on the counter attack, if you want one team to disrupt that, it's Man City. Yeah. And, and they got Vinicius in those moments. But when City were off the ball, and they were, when Madrid were off the ball, and they were defending, City were building up, they were defending the 4 4 2. It was Valverde, it was Rodrigo, who were white. Vinicius and Bellingham would then shadow cover the two centre backs yeah. and then also block the passing lanes <clears throat> into the middle. So you are thinking, why didn't Vinicius go wide? Because but Carlo knows that if he starts wide on the ball, he's great. But when they lose the ball in City, are now going to progress. You need somebody who can track back a lot better. And I thought Rodrigo was great. And one thing City didn't prepare for was Rodrigo being there. Yeah. It was Rodrigo's movement when Madrid had the ball that caught them on unaware because then you're not looking at the spaces he's picking and the movement he's making to get in behind Akanji. We had a very tough game because Bellingham, Vinicius, Rodrigo, all of them were operating down Akanji's side. At some point, I saw him calling Diaz, Boga, come across, come and help me because he was struggling. So that was good from Carlo. And the way City actually, the way Madrid set themselves up to press City's build up was good in a sense that they denied City the ability to play down the middle. And we've said this before, that this season, a lot of teams have found a way to stop City from being that midfield, box, midfield crazy team and get the passing going. But that came down to personnel for City. When City were building up, they would go with John Stones and Rodri as the double pivot. Mm -hmm. They would see Bernardo Silva and uh, Kovacic step up into the next midfield block. So it was City virtually building up with three at the back, four in the box, and then the front players who are the, the three there. But the Madrid's pressing made, made it difficult for them to go down the middle. And also, we saw that when Kovacic went, went high up the pitch, he loves spaces. Kovacic, he, he can't does. play in those type of spaces. He wants to progress the ball. He wants, he wants to run with the ball. And in the space, space where the game was congested, he was struggling. So Pep did something which was great. He swapped Stones and Kovacic. Mm. So in the second half, you realize that Stones went higher and Kovacic came around Rodri, where there was space for him to take the ball, push the ball and release, yeah. push the ball and release. Then John Stones would go into the half space, higher up the pitch, alongside Bernardo, alongside Fudi, whoever would swap around. Then there was also the Ellen Haaland factor. I know on social media everybody's talking about. Again, mm -hmm. another matter that came to the highlight, that came to the forefront. Yeah. That Ellen Haaland, when he doesn't score, he doesn't affect the game. But to be fair, I don't think it was the case in this match. I thought he affected the game. Massively. Game. Yeah. And were, okay, so there were two things he was supposed to do. One of them he couldn't. Now, when Madrid, remember I spoke about the way Madrid stops City from going down the middle easily. So Rodri had a rough game. Rodri didn't have his A game. Yeah. Because they were always on him. So some, he misplaced some pass, couldn't find the right passes. And, and that's time. fair to Madrid because yeah. a lot has gone through Rodri this season. And, and so they knew yeah. who and where yeah. they had to target. So Valverde's energy, Camavinga's energy was great. Now, because uh, City were struggling to go down the middle as they would like to, Otega now had to start going long to Ellen Haaland. So in the first half, about five times he went long to Ellen Haaland when Madrid had squeezed up. But Ellen against Rudiger 1v1, he could not hold up the ball for City. So this tried a couple of times, it wasn't working. Yeah. Then Ellen Haaland stops coming short, <laughs> starts going wide, wide. Start going wide and going back. Yeah. So there's a massive gap between Madrid's two center halves or the back line and then Madrid's midfield. What that happened, what that meant was that Madrid's centre backs couldn't be involved in build up or play. Yeah. So, so they were it, too far from their midfield. They were too far from the midfield. And that also opened up spaces for City in a sense that created. In fact, in between the, the, yeah. the, the pockets, City, yeah. the goal that City scored, it was as a result of Madrid's centre backs realizing that there's an Ellen Haaland for them to pay attention to. So they are sitting deep. And then vacating central, and vacating spaces. central spaces. So yeah. when if you look at the option that Pep has, if a champ draw for Haaland, he can score. He's a better scorer than Alvarez. Yes. But can Alvarez again engage those center halves as Haaland would? No, he can't. The answer is no. He won't keep them that occupied. So Pep stops Erling Haaland from coming short to hold the ball or hold the ball up for City. And then the instruction, I think, is engage the center backs and keep them as deep as possible. So Phil Foden wasn't having a great game until so Haaland started staying happened. deep. Yeah. As soon as Haaland went deep, no, there was space the space... Yeah. In the, in the house space on the edge of the box. That's where he took that shot. And so when the, what if you watch Foden's go? When the ball went wide and the ball came to John Stones. If Haaland is not in the box and occupying the yeah, thinking of Trump, down. Rüdiger and Germany are dashing mm, out yeah, to close the space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that however, whatever happens at the end of this season, Pep would not like the way some of these big games have developed. Especially post-Gunohan in the summer. So 
We're talking about what City have lost and what they have gained in terms of their transfers. In the past, they would have had a bit of quality out wide. So through Riyad Mahrez or whoever, yeah. they don't have that. Yeah, area. their wide players haven't been great this season. That's they have not been able to replace that or find solutions to that. In terms of inventiveness from the middle of the pack, so all of this ability to play in tight spaces and play that final ball yeah. and be able to sometimes take the sting out of the game that Gunohan offered them is something they have not had. Mm. But they did spend money on Matthias Nunes, yeah. on Kovacic, Kovacic as well. Doku, but it is well. damning that in the games when he needed to make, he needed those profiles. What did he do? He persisted with Ellen Brahalan. Even though in terms of profiling, if you need someone to drop shot or if you need someone to stretch a defense with his movement out wide and still be useful when the ball gets to him, Haaland is not the guy. But actually, that is great coaching because that is who he has. Yeah, but I'm, and, and, I'm coming to that. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm saying that it is to Pep's credit, but if for two consecutive years, he is being required to, form, to find more solutions than what they've spent money to go onto the market to purchase to do. That's a bit problematic. Because so I think I just, if I understand I, I you, know. what Achu is trying to say is, and it doesn't invalidate what Situ is saying. Yeah. So what he's trying to say, what Achu is trying to say is that Pep's transfer activity was we'll supposed change. to solve problems that he's now having to rely on we, the existing material we don't to know solve. That. That, that is if we assume Pep was going to, this season was going to play like he was playing last season. And we've seen Pep. He's almost he every changes season. a lot. Yeah. He, he, so if we assume that Pep was going to stay with what he did last season, then what actually is saying will be valid. It means that, but the thing is, not necessarily, because even if those changes that we, we, that you've explained very well were intentional, like he's, this is what he set out to do, you will still require that the investment that they have made will be able to give them a better product from, because he's not experimenting. He's doing it because he genuinely believes that is the best way to stretch the Madrid defense. Mm. That is the best way to find spaces in the middle. I'm just saying that, if it is that we spend 30 million pounds on Kovacic and then in the games that matter, it is we have to revisit the old tactic from last season of John Stones moving into that space. It's and not doing the, the reason why I don't necessarily agree with you is when you look at the profiles and let's let's put away assumption. OK, yeah. we can't assume that Pep went to buy uh, Nunez and, to uh, replace and Kovacic right. to replace Gundogan. They are not the same. Kovacic has never been that player who high up the pitch gives yeah. What he gives deep. His so I would say Pep rather may, maybe overthought it and made a mistake by switching them in the first half. Yeah. Realize that it's Kovacic will be much better playing his in, more natural suited zone yes. and then dropped him back. We've seen in the Champions League final, the second half, mm. we saw when he allowed uh, uh, John Stones to push a bit further yeah. towards the right hand side and it worked. So I don't think what he what he did on, on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, yeah. I don't think it was something new. I think he tried to experiment in the first half. And he came back to the factory. And then <laughs> simple. Because he went back to be to fair factory. to Pep though, it's great coaching because not many teams are going to go to Madrid and score yeah. three goals on the Champions League night. And for him to have done those in-game changes. And again, if you're looking for a goal and Erling Haaland is not scoring, why should any coach look at him sending the defenders back to create room for, for Foden and others? Yeah. That is great coaching. It is. And you talk to the max. Yeah. And on, 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 on the Foden goal, on, on the Vardio goal, for instance, mm. It was Kovacic in then who pushed up on Chouameni. Mm -hmm. Haaland pushed up on Rudiger. And because they were deep, Kamavinga had no choice than to drop. Mm -hmm. Then the ball comes out to Vadio. Tony Cruz doesn't defend well. And then there is a goal. So it is... I it think is, they also underestimated the power of his right no, foot. It is, yeah. it's, of course. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not great with his right foot. It's not yeah. like... He, he, he's, he doesn't he does have, have that reputation. Exactly. Have to, so Tony Cruz is... is Anyway, still like a disc. Once a player lines up to shoot, you can't predict where the boy is going to end I up. I know a certain okay. somebody yeah, who see, was on Tony Cruz. So, the whole for, me, for me, just, just to touch on what yes. you are saying yeah. now. If you remember last... So that, that's my uh, point of the game then. Yeah. 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 Last season's uh, Bayern and uh, Man City game. Yeah. When you... The, the post-match analysis, I was listening to this German podcast. And when it comes to coaching, in fact, they, coach even give us a, a much better perspective. There are certain instructions, specific instructions you give to certain players force this person onto his left foot because you know that the, le the right foot is dangerous. Yes. So when he does that, he will not be under the, the, the same level of uh, uh, pressure and intensity to close him down when he knows he's forced uh, Vardiol onto his right foot. So I will not necessarily blame Tony Cruz in that position because they had gotten Vardiol in the position That's they wanted him point. in. 
Then out of nowhere, the right foot ends up being as good as the left foot. But was it Cruz who forced him to? I thought I thought it was Cavaliere who forced him. No, Cruz was, was, was defending the space. Was touch, there was a yeah. Cruz was defending the space. But when the player lines up to shoot, though, yeah, but it's his right foot. If Cruz closes in on him, and then he's he's left as, as a, a gaping hole. Yeah. So if I'm Cruz, yes, he's gone onto his right foot. Let me just keep marking my space and not give him the room because you don't expect a player like that to shoot. I think it is. For me, it's hindsight analysis if you say, yeah, he should have closed him down. But in the, in the heat of the moment, you are assessing strengths and weaknesses. You are, strength, you are assessing where yeah. the danger could be. And the danger is not on Vardio's right foot. Never. If I move up, I'm leaving space. And that, you could easily give it to a, a, a Haaland or a, a Kovac to hold that play and then a, a, a space could be created. So let me keep marking the space. And then this guy, obviously, is yeah. on his right foot. So, but, so you yeah. see, definitely a bit of a surprise. <laughs> Coach, what I wanted to, 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 to focus on is this. Uh, two things. Number one, um, the great games we are seeing now, the no holes bad approach to knockout football, is that because of the away goal rule being taken away? It's making teams take more risk? Because I've seen people say, like, I, I don't know if you guys monitored on the timeline, there were people saying, ah, I want away goal rule brought back yeah. because, like, what's his own I don't like this. Do you, no, where I, do you, I where do you, I, you start? away goal rule is gone, is dead. Like, do you, what do you, like, how, you do, see, how I, do I personally prefer it this way. The no away goal. No route. away goal. Because there are times where we've had team not come to play football. Thank you. Yeah. Rather end up. Still qualifying. Your team is a perfect example <laughs> of when you won the Champions League. <laughs> it was going there. You understand? You mean Chelsea? Yeah, they are, they are a perfect example of when they won the Champions League. Can you give us an example? Ah, you've forgotten. I have not. I yes. want to challenge you on it because it's you know, propaganda. I saw, them, I saw them against Barcelona. In 2009? Yes. And okay. I saw that. Uh, was it one game? No, in in even the two games. We the two games, who deserved, who played saw, better and deserved I, to win the second I saw leg? Jose's Inter Milan against Barcelona when they won. Did you watch the Especially, first leg? I did. What, what was it? Where, where Inter deep? Inter in the played and beat Barcelona. No, in the Fair second leg. Square. In the second leg, I think they sat very deep. In the second leg, you two play and win. That's what I'm saying. That I prefer it this way. Thank this you. Way, if you think you're better but than no, me, let's go ahead. So, so th this, I picked up, so I picked up oh. something I'm, I, I'm, on, on why that way go rule was introduced and why it's not there anymore. Just like it is, no Africa will still have that way go rule. Yes. Mm -hmm. The reason being that conditions around countries are not the same. Same, exactly. So when you travel to a condition that is not, if like, if not favorable or you're not used to, and you, win, you square a goal there, it's more valuable. Yes. But across Europe, they have implemented what we call our club licensing to the extent that for a game to be hosted as a Champions League game it or any European it meets, game, it meets a minimum it meets requirement. An, it doesn't like give any the pitch, advantage. The pitch quality are the same. Yeah. The referees are the same. The hotels is so are the same. Basically, no security. That, so no advantage, advantage or disadvantage. Exactly. Only advantage is your home crowd. So, that's so the, the, the level, the yeah. level grounds, the yeah. grounds are leveled. Yeah. That is why there is no need so, for so an extra boost for a goal. I want it this way and I thank God it is this way. But just to comment on the game itself, I think Carlo Angelotti took a bold decision that, in my view, didn't work out for him. I was going to, that was my second point. I was going yes. to ask you about Carlo Ancelotti yeah. and whether you actually think that he's underrated as a coach in terms of his tactics. Mm -hmm. Because every time people ask about Carlo Ancelotti, the first thing out of many people's mind is great man manager. No, he's a proper but tactician. But not a lot of people... Comment on his tactics, and you don't look, achieve he, this much yeah, success there was, what he's achieved there's without no way, being a tactical genius. There's no way he could have succeeded the, the manner in which he has. Yeah, without being without being a proper tactician. He's always been a proper tactician. Maybe the man management issue is is is, is something that maybe he, sets him apart exactly from the rest. I was coming to the point where I think that decision, in my view, backfired. The decision not to start with Nacho the alongside. Rudiger, then to move Tramani into midfield, into midfield mm. to add more steam. steam and bite. You see, I think that was what backfired. Because especially Tramani finds himself in the position that he was never comfortable with. Because before you go on, especially on Tramani, were you surprised that Ellen Haaland did, did engage Rudiger more than he did Tramani, especially when Tramani got there? 
yellow card in the in the opening. I was scene. coming. I to was that. thinking was, Haaland was going to be. I was coming. Uh, exactly. I actually I was thought it that. was credit but, to but, Chiamini. But but, but he still it, have played as well as he. That did. was credit to Rudiger or the Real Madrid setup. They just wouldn't allow Haaland to engage. Yeah. yeah but if, if you go play around Chiamini away. anymore. No, he will move away from him and right. hand him over to Rudiger. Okay. These are simple communication. Okay, the ball is not going to move, and then I'm in charge. So I think the decision not to start with Nacho. Nacho. Mm. So don't forget that last week when we did analysis, I was so much on, on the on midfield. On the midfield. I said, look, yeah. the midfield with Tramani, uh, Valverde, yeah. Kudivinga, Bellingham. I will start all the four. Mm. You drop Cruz. Yeah, I'll drop him. Quick. Mm. Rather, I'll you bench both Cruz and look at Modric. Oh. And use him the way Modric. Because Modric came on in that second half. And, and he made a, a big difference. Huge impact yeah. Yeah. than whatever Cruz had done in the entire game. Time he lasted in the game. And Tramani himself, you could clearly see that the young man was just not comfortable in that position. He needed to be overly disciplined in order to keep yeah. the yeah. defensive setup of Real Madrid. I think that. But to be fair, he's played a lot there this season. No, but that is not his role. I think that if he was in midfield, Phil Foden would not score that goal. Mm. Because that was his, that is his zone. And he would have definitely, alongside Kamavenga, given Phil Foden enough pressure. Not to have a full blast of the ball that he had. But also, if you have Kamavinga, Chouameni, Valverde, particularly Valverde on that right, it then makes more sense to have Rodri, Rodrigo, sorry, playing out right or starting on the right. So mm-hmm. then it takes away the insecurity of what happens when City have the ball and Madrid don't. Because yes. then you have insurance in Valverde. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Then you can actually use Bellingham to engage the centre backs, which means but City perhaps don't get to push as forward as they did. As they did. Especially and right from the beginning. Yes. The ver- in the first half, I actually thought it was ridiculous how high up City City when they had the ball. Yeah. They, had they were literally in the centre no, back. The centre backs. If, if if you don't play, I would play Cruz irrespective because no, Valverde, he's in, in Valverde, Chomeni, Kamavinga, Bellingham, great athletic athleticism you get there. Great that. legs and energy. You need that. There isn't one player in that midfield though who can take the ball and dictate. But we didn't. You see, play. this is a game that they were never going to dictate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah no, no, but, like, but they were, so they your best bet is, is trying see, to manage. It's, manage it's, it. it's trying to manage and use the, the the tenacity of these young guys to get the Man City guys to feel a bit more sensation in but their bones. But do you bones. think Germany is as aggressive as the way you think? No. Like, compared because to the Cruz, way you're explaining no, it. Compared to Cruz, 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 he is. His compared is to Cruz, he, he is. I, I don't even think they're the same kind of No, player. I'm not it's compared to his I'm, I'm talking the, about the, the energy he brings his to the presence, midfield. His energy, the way he will no, battle. So if you had Germany, you had to deploy the midfield. Mm-hmm. How would you deploy them in terms of posi- average positions? Look, I would have Germany deeper. Yeah, he deeper. He sits in front of the back foot directly. And allow Kamavenga alongside. Yeah. More or less, it is like to so Kamavenga a, 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 a diamond. A diamond. Mm-hmm. And Bellingham at the tip of it. And ask the young man Valverde to focus on the right, right side. hand side. Like Kamavinga on the Chav- left. Kamavinga on the left. Bellingham exactly. on the and then Bellingham on top. Super. I think that would have. And I, look, I'm expecting now, Tramene will not be in the. In, the rest fixture. Yes, he's yeah. suspended. So that's your place. That is Mobile going to be a huge problem for Real Madrid. Because we've seen them at the Etihad. When they went there with Cruz and Modric, they were outrun. They were outrun. And even if you go and put one of them there, I think they will suffer. That is the reason why I think that Man City is starts- also the, the, the build up of Real Madrid, where Fela Mendy and Cavaya are allowed to set up high so that Cruz can drop in to be a third center back. No, see, so he's, he's, the against, more, he's the more comfortable player. So when against this, picking the balls from the back, there, there's something about, yeah, there was something it, about Cruz's role in the team that. I, I, I get a concern. It was more for when they were in position. When they were yes. in possession yeah. and some of the positions he picks to allow fullbacks. Yeah. To go. I'm not sure if Chomeni has the same no, ability. No, is it for, is it Chomeni, if you look at, if you, if you watched him, even in that French national team, okay. he's sitting in front of the back four. How many times have you seen him give the ball away? One thing I've admired about him is his ability to do the simple thing. I mean, he's he's hardly, he's, his boss, or perhaps one uh, player is looking for, it's looking yeah. up to maybe Pogba. I'm, Runs yeah, like him. Yeah, you see, he hardly like complicates he issues. Does. And I think that is the main reason why go for Pogba. he is very, yeah. very, very important in this Real Madrid right. setup. Coach, so, I'm going to ask you this uh, quickly, all, all, all four of you. In a return leg at the Etihad, what would it come down to? Look, I, I, I think it would come down to Man City's 
because you expect French. that it would be the same fiery, no holes, bad yeah. approach from both sides again. I think Real is at handicap. At the moment? At the moment. Wow. Because they will not go in, I think the midfield they will go and present <clears throat> and the had will not be strong enough. That's, I've that's... always said that. That midfield will have to include the four boys. Any one of them shot will create a huge problem. The Cruz and the Modric will have to sit in the last 20, 15 minutes because you need to keep it tight. Okay. Real cannot put themselves in a situation where they have to go and chase the game again. Keep it as tight as you can and get these experienced guys to come in there and then show their class. Like we saw Modric uh, dead. When he came, look, he just more or less uh, took charge of the game and, and look at when he was. He was brought in at the time where they had to go and chase the game and his passing ability because look, he had brought in some fresh energy He's not what he used to be. So he cannot go and compete with Rodri when they are all fresh and they have to go at a goal. So Real Madrid, in my view, is, is at a huge advantage. Handicap and of them. course, uh, disadvantage. And mm. again, the fact that Man City are that good at home. Yes. Yep. I don't remember the last time they lost a Champions League game under Pep Guardiola That's at home. Or That's even any happened. game at all. I think they are approaching like a 14 I mean, Rodri game has run. played three, two, over three years or something. They've not lost a Champions League it's, game at home. It's, it's and, and they need to lose. Yes. They, <laughs> yeah. For Madrid to progress. They need to lose for Madrid to qualify. Even if it's on penalties, they need to lose. Exactly. And, 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 and for me, I think when we see the two of them next week, Wednesday, anybody who supports Real Madrid clearly understands that. They, they are going in as the underdog. As the underdog. Big, 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 big underdog. Well, they have... Uh, one big conversation was the absence of De Bruyne. Uh, many people expected to start in that away game. If Man City have him available for the second leg, he goes straight in the lineup? Of course. Look, it's a, it's a huge boost. And especially in that, in the second half. Yeah. I was just asking myself, if De Bruyne was in this game, City, City would have created chances for fun. Because the space in between the lines as a result of the, the tactical switch that Pep yes. did, it was going to allow the Bruyne with space. If Ramadou were going to deal with it, then it would mean they would have to assign a player to follow to, him. To follow him. And that would create even more space for the rest. And for me, I feel like, look, see, the, the approach, this, this teams have faced, I think this is the fourth time since 2019. Three that times in four years. In th yeah. Exactly. And the approach City uses at the Etihad is always very, very different from what we see at the Bernabeu. City will come. They will play their game. They are not going to be overly concerned about, about Real Madrid. And it's, I'm saying it's a, in the context that what City will do will force Real Madrid to adjust even their attacking plan. We saw it last, last season with what they did with uh, Vinicius and Benzema at the Bernabeu. The only thing I, I, I feel might slightly go <clears throat> against City is if Kawaka is not fit by then, and I don't think no, he, I don't think think he, he might not be. That's why I feel Madrid still have a chance, especially on the break, because we saw it at the Bernabeu. Even last season's the 4 0, we saw it. The only reason was Kawaka covered so well, the scenario didn't develop enough for us to see the, the, the end of it. But with the lack of pace of the, the guys at the back, yeah. even the, the, in, the, in their double pivot, the midfield, whoever the midfield combination is, if it's John Stones, if it's Rodri, if it's Kovaci, they don't have that space to be able to cover. That means City can will have Real, to be... Can very... Real do this? I don't know. Uh -huh. Because there'll be no Tramani, can he then say that, look, Vavede, don't go right. Be central. In the, be central. And then let's go with uh, 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 Modric as a force nine. No. And then this guy. I wonder if already has the discipline to Yeah, he's not. Stay. He, 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 he will play off somebody who has. No, no. When I say he should stay center, he doesn't sit in front of the back four. Right, okay. He's given the ability to go because he's a got to box maybe then. Brandon yeah. energy. Yeah, he's good. Because he needs to go up to another to punish. Look, yeah. a, a, a quick one. Yes. For me, look, just one minute on this. I don't like this away goal thing. It's a, it's a very fair. It's a very unfair assessment and a very unfair rule on a certain group and certain philosophy of football. Back in the day, there were teams that were built on and we were giving them fans growing up, Catanasio defense. It's not everybody, when you say you played better, playing better is not necessarily keeping the ball. The ball. Oh, exactly. the opponent. Yeah, there are teams that thrive and we've seen some of the greatest managers ever. Jose Mourinho. Look at the work that Diego Simeone has done. And you, need, you, see, you need to appreciate it from their, their lens to see that that is also football. And for yeah, me, that's, that's, football. that's yes. I, I really that's appreciate that football. type of football. No, but that, that the thing is, if you say you are saying, you are saying that that type of football is, has been killed now. It's been killed. Because, because, of the no, that type because of football, now you are forcing me. No, 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 it has not been killed. 
if you still believe you could play like that and win, play and win. No. Nobody's going to give you an away goal. You have to win again. No. Play and win. Look, the away goal is the away goal rule. Yes, the away goal rule is more advantageous to attacking football because you can do three three here or four four here and go and, and, go and do one one day. Yeah. and we are still playing on. And I still play. It is. It's for, for me. No, <laughs> it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's. It's, because it's, it's still more, more impressive that I score three over there. Yeah, then you scoring if one. If I go, if I go yeah, to a home and I score one, requires an element of what Danny is saying is being bastardized. Even so, in the case of City, if they wanted a zero zero, they would have to play what we call cut and I should to see it out. So even the away goals will still accommodate, be be it reductive, be yeah. it defensive, whatever yeah. you call it, it still accommodates. Yeah, that but kind he's of saying football. that the current arrangement means City can't do that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying that. Well you play have to, a and I'm you have to no, no, but why should they play Catanasio? The aim of every no, football is, game is, is, is for win. a team to win. And the point is, based on the rules of a game and knowledge of results, a coach designs a team. So based on the rules of the, of, with the way it goes, coaches could design the way the team should play, bearing in mind knowledge of the results. Yes. Now, the new knowledge of results also means that a good coach you should, should come up with a strategy yes. to, to get Daniel, win. You're not so getting it's Daniel. killing Daniel defensive is saying football. That, yes. it's, it's killing so defensive football. Like, how is it killing defensive football? Daniel is saying that right now. So, for example, no, the city... What's, what's, what's the essence of... Goal? I watch it. For example, example Alessio Madrid won by two goals to one. Mm-hmm. So you're saying right? that's Alessio Madrid can go to Borussia Dortmund and go and defend. Quick, one nil. So yes, so it is a scenario. So in this case for Real Madrid, if Real Madrid drew 3-3, and now I have to go to... And there was away goal. And now I have to go to Etihad and win because 3-3 means they are out. It is City who have to find a way of defending. That is it. And Madrid, so there will always be scenarios that throws up. No, who and I'm saying they are who more, if, if you look at since the, the, the season when the rules were changed, goals are increasing in terms of rounds. Yes. It's always on the it's other. It is that, that, that is doing. favoring attacking football. No, no, no. That is that the doing is, of the coaches. Section. coaches. Okay. Let, about the coaches. Let's get it straight that you can defend and win football games. Yes. Yes. You cannot. No, you did it. Okay. Antonio Conte did it. Play. At the end of the day, you can win. Because there are way who was there to Give me one minute on this. The, there is a, a current debate around uh, who the most talented English youngster is. So for them. Are you let me put, you let us predict who we Let's talk about Arsenal. He says his advantage, Real. Real. Sorry. No, he says no, his advantage, City. City. He says his advantage, City. Advantage, City. 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 He says his advantage, City. Yeah. He still says Real Madrid. Say your thing. It says Real Madrid because mm-hmm. of all the top teams in Europe, the West in dealing with transitions is Man City. Yeah. Unlike last season. Last season, that back four of centre-backs that they had, yeah. there's no counter-attack nonsense. This season, even Brighton, even Brentford, Luton, mm-hmm. in transitions, City are struggling. And the best team in Europe on transitions is Real Madrid. That is why I can't comfortably say that because it's Etihad and City have got that weakness that is Madrid. Man, you can comfortably say that it's Real Madrid. No, I'm not saying it's typically Real Madrid. But that's the question Fent is asking. No, I want, I want listeners and viewers to know why the game could go either way. So but you, you, you explain way. why because of the... So it's not straightforward. Like, that's what you're saying. It's not straightforward. Mm-hmm. And just yeah, simple, yeah, especially the, the factor of Kawaka. Kawaka, Kawaka also yeah. is that uh-huh. the game could, could be done before... Real Madrid can settle into fashioning out their counter-attacking plan. It's going to be done. Whatever Real Madrid won't have to do on yeah. Wednesday, from the word it is go. going to require a great tactical sacrifice. From the word go. Otherwise, their, their, their midfield assistants now, in fact, the entire team assistants now, will not have the balance to face City head-on and emerge with a win. They have so to adjust. The only way is perhaps maybe sacrifice someone else, maybe Jude Bellingham, into playing a more conservative role that gives the team balance. Yeah, whatever because they have to do. There is no way you will line up. Be, look, you can decide to even play five midfielders. But of the players available, there is no combination that can deal with City. Not at the ET hat. Yeah. I, I think you guys no, are tactically. City. So for you, tactically, you, coach, okay. tactically okay. something can be done about, about this. Game. I wanted to move to Barca game, which Achu has been itching to speak about. Yeah. Listen, Barca did the impossible. And I'll give the Arsenal so what game do you mean the Daniel. impossible? That wasn't an impossible. Well, not the impossible, uh-huh. the improbable. Maybe. Um, I don't think that a lot of people expected uh, Barcelona to go to Paris Saint-Germain and win. Maybe get a decent result. But they did it. And people have called Xavi. I saw on Twitter some artwork trending where they rated coaches uh, uh, world class, hey, great coaches, that, that good was, coaches. That thing was just for engagement. They bad coaches. And they put Xavi under bad. And Luis Enrique is a great coaches. 
And he's gone. No, that, that's not the most annoying thing. What's the most annoying thing? Ten Hag. Thank you very much. Ten Hag. Wait, why, why did they fix they Ten Hag? They put Ten Hag at good. <laughs> and they put Pochettino and, and they put Javi at bad. Javi at bad. Yes. And they put Klopp, who did? Carlo at, and Pep in the same Walker. category. Bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. uh, take me through that game. It is Was that just a fluke win? Or Barcelona are just all around a better football team than PSG at the moment and are tipped to go through. I think to make any of those conclusions off 90 minutes would be too reductive. Especially when you consider there were moments in that game that PSG could have run away with that game. 50th minute, they have that great chance they score. Four minutes after that, there is a counter break. With the young man in the lock, so how have I forgot? Bacalo. And you expect that Bacola, he either squares it, Bacola, he either squares it or at least forces a save from the keeper. He doesn't. Six minutes later, Barcelona go on the other end and then they score. If Bacola gets anything and PSG score that game, that's 3-1. Yeah. And, and it significantly changes the narrative. And so it was that pinball game. It was that sort of game. But it appears things are coming together for Barcelona because in, in what world does it make sense that Pedri, I mean, per convention, you're supposed to take time, right? Warm himself into matches. Get back to actual fitness where you can start expecting him to be able to influence games, pick out passes like he played to Rafinha. But he's coming off injury and what? 16, 70 sec- seconds after his introduction. 60. He plays that pass. And then they are able to get that goal. It's 2-2. And it's a ridiculously great pass. pass. But for me, look, I think PSG self-destructed here. I cannot for the life of me understand what Marquinhos was doing on that third goal. And maybe coach can help us explain the whole concept of zonal marking and how... And, I've and never been a thing. fan of zonal marking. And here's the thing. He's PSG's best header of the ball. Yes, he He's their most experienced defender. He spots the danger. And I can understand why he would panic initially. For the and, goal? Yes. You blame him, Marquinhos? Yes. Why? Because he gets a bit too excited and decides that I need to go and attack the ball. He vacates his zone a microsecond before Christensen cut, comes in. There. It's, not, it's not like Donnarumma's job to play. No, 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 I'm, 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 no. And to be fair, to be fair, uh, the, the if, keeper only comes the in the whole match. match. The, just the before he goes. No. It was yeah, it was his zone. Just before he goes yeah. on, I just need to point out that the whole game, Donnarumma struggled with dealing with crosses. crosses. And it was so bad. So I'm sure. It so was so bad. Actually, the whole match. He wasn't confident to want to come out for that one. So I'm sure when they went for the recess. There was a tactical instruction. It was so bad. Like, I don't couldn't come believe it. And let allow him deal the defenders with it. to deal with it. And let him deal with the ball. So and if you look at that second half, he didn't come up for any of the Because the first half, he he was, it that, was almost embarrassing. But the first but that, half, that would be a very poor instruction. Yeah, because no, the boys in the 60 yard area. You see? No, but his involvement here, had created two goal scoring chances coming. for Barcelona. The problem here is that one once, cleared over once, the line. I am just saying that, once I didn't see him come out, for any of those crosses on any of the corner He actually did step out and came back. No. And then step back. No, he's not decisive point is that enough. He did not. So in the first half, when he engaged, yeah. he, he dropped two balls. He dropped yeah. two balls. The first one got cleared off the, the line. line. And then the, the second one, one simply did not go. And then, so tactically, you expect the coach to take a decision on that. My problem was that if that was the decision, why then go zona? If you are telling the goalkeeper, don't come. Yeah, then you need to pick up a man. But, yeah, a yeah, yeah, but you see, it, it, even the zona was not the problem. The problem was because of, of all the players in that zone, mm-hmm. Marquinhos was the only guy not assigned to any defender. So per convention, he's been given the freedom to attack the ball. Attack that ball when so it comes. So he wrongly up. judged the you, trajectory because of Because once ball, you then. miss it, you are the only one who's been assigned to attack the ball. Yeah. Once you miss it, there, the distance to goal is too short for yeah. anyone to react and then deal with it. So you realize that a microsecond after he vacates that position, you see, Chris just to add this, Barcelona taking the corner kick. They have committed the player dead. At the other end. Mbappe didn't come back. So he had more or less stopped two Barcelona players Players from coming And then there's Dembele on the edge of the area. There's Dembele on that. So in terms of numbers, it was more or less a 7v sort of 9 in the box. So PSG had the numbers to deal with the situation. That is why I'm sure that tactically the goalkeeper is what's been told. Right. Don't, Stay, don't, don't we have the numbers so we can, yeah. if, mm-hmm. even if they, were, they had gone man to man. Should they drop you for Navas though? Navas Champions League winner experience. 
but, yeah. but here is the same. So, actually, so, uh-huh. so you just great. finish up and go into what this means for yeah. the second leg for it's me. It's been great in the league domestically. Made some brilliant tips for them. Um, and you expected that at the very least they will be... Ah, but the guy is sound. Do you know the... Sorry, sorry, sorry. But do you know the goal, the Rafinha second goal? Charlie, Charlie, the Pedri ball. No, he's not saving that. It's not the save. It's what? Do you know it was his poor clearance that gave Barca back the possession team. But he don't know. He tried to no, pass the ball or something. Yes. No, no, so play no, no, is no, long. No, Why no, don't no, want to pass? No, no, so I, I, you know, think, that, that's what the year will do. He won't pass. He won't go wide. He will go long because you can't do it. Yeah. He tried and to why? be cute and then Barca regained the ball with one pass. I would blame Enrique. Anyway, what do you, you, so actually, you, you, you yeah. What Sorry. does this mean so, for the second leg, though? Do you think that PSG can fix all their problems that you just enumerated? He just needs to coach them smarter. There's no point in asking Donnarumma to build from the back. And I say it's your first time. Go, go long and go wide, right? You, you don't have players who can win the ball, at least not aerially. And I didn't understand the rationale behind playing Gonzalo Ramos off the bench and starting with Matt. I sense you in the current iteration does not offer anything that anything significant that PSG will not have, right? In this moment, in in what role? Make it or at, at all? What like, he, the what, was a false nine? Yeah, the, this so you mean, that's nine the false nine. Got, they have uh, they have more the to gain from. What's his name? Hmm. Colombo. 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 You've got Gonzalo yeah. Ramos. Yeah. Gonzalo Ramos. Yeah. And Lee yeah. Kangi yeah. is in yeah. brilliant form. Scored against Messi over the weekend yeah. and played a blinder there. You have more to gain from going with an actual centre forward, be it Colombo when is available or Gonzalo Ramos, who by the way. Save them at the weekend. So yeah. m- my expectation would have been that they have the rhythm, they have the natural flow in this moment, right? And give you a more direct road to goal, especially for the game states that we saw on Wednesday. Give Ramos to Kubasi. Yeah. But I think that, look, Barca have gained far more from this. Mm. Jaffe especially. In the last, now he's gone 12 games unbeaten. Yeah. He's won five consecutive matches. Yes, they are eight points behind in La Liga. But almost everyone has accepted that and has written, is gone, yeah. has written that off. I wonder what this means in the grand scheme of affairs as to whether or not he can have a rethink and decide that he's going to stay. I don't think he's or having a rethink. whether or not Laporta himself would want to begin that conversation because whatever he has to say, whatever Javi has to do, you have to look back at how much the club has changed since Javi returned. Mm-hmm. A lot of the directors who were at the club at the time he got back have all left. I missed suggestions that there is a clash of personalities and all of that. In fact, when uh, the man who left in March, last month, Edward Romeo left, yeah. the club mm-hmm. statement actually mentioned specifically that there was a, a clash of commitment and, and all of that. Matteo Alemani, the director of football left. Yeah. Craig The Jody. So you have all of these executives leaving who were part of the structure Javi thought he was going to work with. All of them have left. And now you have all of the so-called yes men, Deku and everyone else that Laporta is cozy and happy to work with. Whatever happens in the reverse fiction may not change anything. And I think that, look, in this moment, they are better equipped. And Javi is, I like the humility to coach smartly. He has steadied a really rocky ship exactly. look, since he came in, to be fair. People expect him to play Luis Enrique Bassa, Pep Guardiola Bassa, Frank Re- He's a different manager. Yeah. The players they have are very different players. He's coaching smart. There's no point in being excessively expansive if he does not have the players to play that kind of football. He's giving them Pop Kupasi as well. Yeah. He's giving them I mean, Petri. He's Petri, giving them Gavi. Yeah. He's giving and it's, them. And to be fair to him, he's had to go the whole season without the players like Pedri, yeah. Gavi, yeah. who basically yeah. build that mid for them. Yeah. And Rafinha. You, you have a the point. The only thing that I don't like is how is the revisionism that has set in. How everything Javi has done is being viewed in the lens of the last two months. That one is not. Right. <laughs> he got okay. to the point of accepting responsibility and saying, no, but he's, saying look, he's been an excellent look, coach for them. Super. He's, he's, he's super. Done a really good job. I don't know. I'm just saying that people are beginning to overrate him and say he's a world class coach because on the back of I don't think world class is where they put it. Even say when he won the league. Like everyone look, said, he's how doing many well. how many world class coaches do we have? Two. That's the point. No, right now we have like 16. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, because Ten Hag didn't say. Oh, uh, listen. Um, I'm going to come back to Daniel because we need to talk about something. The, the Arsenal, Real Madrid, uh, sorry, but Bayern Munich yeah. game. It was so eventful, like so many things in the match to speak about. <laughs> if we don't start now, we might not get through then and our time will run out. So I'm going to come to Danny Key and say, listen, two all draw at the Emirates Stadium against a Bayern team that everybody thought 
was poor coming into the match, but certainly have a better history against Arsenal in the Champions League. So Arsenal were also expected to, I don't know, fold if you like. But even beside the two all draw, the game had so many controversial moments, it's impossible to even pick one. DK, so I'm giving you a clean slate. I don't know where you want to begin from. Um, I think Arsenal is a lack of character in the Champions League. And it's it's Champions League, Premier League, they are two very different things. In the Champions, you need to build your character in the Champions League. It's a completely different the pedigree is built. Yeah. My brother always says hey, the soon soon airbox. Yeah. <laughs> soon. <laughs> soon soon. That one is true. <laughs> the, the, soon. the only thing that I'll put my 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 hand up. And the only thing is that I didn't think Bayern were in the position to to cause Arsenal such problems. Now I just feel like if you watch the game, tactical instructions of both teams. I feel like if Arsenal were on that level of maturity at Bayern, they would have beaten the Bayern mm-hmm. team. It was just down to character and uncharacteristic mistakes from, from the Arsenal players, especially from the offense. You look at Odegaard's game, look at Saka's game on the day. For me, it just didn't that work out off. too much. Yeah, it, it didn't work out too much. But I also credit uh, Tuchel. Tuchel did something that for me, just it was absolutely brilliant. After 20 minutes or 15 minutes, Afonso Davis got a yellow card. And I thought Saka was going to get him sent off. Because the first few minutes of the game, first 15 minutes of the game, it was a one-on-one. Saka yeah. was always isolated with Afonso Davis. A couple of fouls later, he had a, a yellow card. But the tactical switch to, I think it was Conrad Lima who sort of doubled up. And almost any time Saka got the ball, we had midfielders closing him down instead of yeah. Afonso Davis. Afonso Davis just tucked in and caused an extra number in the, in the defense. And we all know Arsenal's obsession with playing down that side. We usually see Odegaard also doubling up on the left yep. wing. We see Ben White. So it's almost like three players around that side. Kai Havertz will also join in and, and, and make it extra. Even just last week, and Jokino yeah. created an also went, and it went to the yeah. corner. If you watch the, the soccer goal, the first goal of the game was yeah. created by that very same scenario. And again, we we'll, we'll visit this in our, when we have more time. We'll talk yes. about intelligent players, mm-hmm. intelligent players, and sometimes don't always look at what players do on the ball. The 90 minutes is long. What you do off the ball so, adds so much or takes so yeah. much away from the system. Yeah. So that's how you rate players. It's not always this person can dribble okay. or he so can... It's not always goes at that. It's not Thank always you. pure football. It's not <laughs> always pure football. <laughs> if you watch the Saka goal, Ben White was on the right-hand side. Saka was on the right-hand side. Saka comes inside. Havertz goes, goes out. Yeah. Yes. That switch in position took the defenders along with Havertz and they created that space. And that's something that if you've watched uh, Ateta, uh, Ateta and Arsenal over the last three years, there's a certain way his players receive the ball in the wide areas. Yeah. They are sort of horizontal coming in straight. Yeah. So when you give the pass, it's landing right on their strong foot. They can either cross or shoot. Yeah. They don't need to take a touch. They so, are able to roll across it, their uh-huh. body. So Saka goes inside. Havertz comes out and when Harvard gives the ball to White. wins uh, the possession, gives it to White, he stays in his position. So the Bayern Munich players are still in that position. There's so much space for Saka. He picks it up in his course. That aside, Mwah, but do, you, do, you, do you think Daya could have done better though? Should in he terms have, of should he have closing? approached? Yeah, should he have, because you just stood there trying to block. Yeah, and again, I'll, I'll take you back to the same thing I said about the um, Tony Cruz situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if Daya had moved forward, Saka would have passed it. Okay. It was, it was, it was, yeah. He was literally with, with yeah. So, he was trying you, to block the shot just, if he played. Thank you. But, he just but that was a better option. Move yeah. and compare him to pick the pass. No, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm thinking, a, I'm thinking was, if he moves Yeah, then, it was open. He gets, no, he gets Saka there. Yeah, Saka passes the ball. No, see, but he tried to block and he used him as the, used him as the, as the, as the target. Is it tactical? Players are told, or defenders are told that don't give him the obvious choice. No, but I see, coach, if that moves in, Martinelli is free. And that's that. even easier Get for Martinelli to score. He moving in, Saka giving the pass. Who knows? He could block the pass. Yeah. So that's position. If look, sometimes <laughs> let's credit the the attacker. But was there not another defender to the side of Dyer? Yes. There was. No. So there yeah. was but he was. There was, was delete. But yeah. he yeah. was so, on the wrong so side. He about, was on the wrong side of, of yeah, Martinelli. Martinelli. I'm talking if, about yes, the Martinelli. Yeah. Variable, right? Mm-hmm. In. The reality where he passes the ball to Martinelli. Yeah. Doesn't Martinelli have look, a defender in front? That is on the, look, look, that is on the wrong side. Noah the chance to come out. To reset, yeah. So that would have created it. Anyway, so after that goal, I think Arsenal tactically were brilliant. And I think we're seeing the usual buying we've seen this season. Then that mistake happened. 
And that mistake, this is what we talk. Look, see, the elite level is the elite level for mm-hmm. a reason. Mm-hmm. Every single minute detail matters. Of course. And sometimes fo- football fans need to pay attention to some of these details. That mistake or mix up between Gabriel and Raya, for me, when Gabriel picked up the ball, mm-hmm. in any other scenario, the, 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 the situation is fine. Hurricane's pressing angle is what caused that uh, misplaced pass from Gabriel. Gabriel's passing angles, he's very left-footed. His passing angles are one-dimensional. We all know where he's going to put the ball. If you notice, he picked it up. Hurricane forces him onto the right. So, Gabriel, oh, this is video. Gabriel can't, he can't use his rifle to go back to Raya because Mm. he's not too comfortable. Mm, So, he has to finish the turn and then try and hit it with his left foot. <laughs> and by that time, he was off balance because yeah. Hurricane is now applying a lot of pressure. So he's always going to make that mistake. Yeah. If he makes the pass, it may be over hit, it may be under hit, it may not go in the right direction. And then from there, Arsenal, in terms of the arrest defense, is all over the place because Raya has come out. Somebody has had which to come normally out, perfect. Which is normally league. perfect. Yeah. So I felt like in elite level, Gabriel should have left it for Raya mm. because Raya could see the danger. Yeah. yeah. Hurricane was behind Gabriel. So what you do is you Block leave him. it for your goalkeeper Block and then him. you shield the striker yeah, and prevent course. him from reaching the goalkeeper. Block him off. Which you see all the time. But once Arsenal made that mistake by Gabriel picking up the ball, Hurricane knew exactly what yeah. he had to that's, do. That's a great then, point. Yeah. yeah. And then the goal is scored. And from then, Arsenal... You know all the goals yeah. in the quarterfinal? Yeah. I don't know, but that buying goal is the best for me. It's yeah. just the sequence and the sharpness. And when they pick the ball, when they pick the ball, when the Gretzkes run, run, and then Nabri's, Nabri's diagonal run, run is, and the, the, the weight and the timing of the passes. It was just, just like playing against the minds. But like we're playing the game, we're yeah. playing. And you know, again, the, the goals you're scoring yeah. me. When you when, when you passes, when you watch that yeah. goal, when you watch that goal, you can clearly tell that this is something they've rehearsed. Yeah, over yeah. yeah. It was so sweet. And for me, my biggest disappointment in that, you see, you can always react to save the situation. Yeah. You've made a mistake. That's fine. For Goreska's run. They picked him up with a sweep. I think it was Conor Lima who picked the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once he picked up the ball in that situation, there was only one pass. Yes, only that, that was, he was going to yeah. make. For me, Ben White messed up. Ben White had the run in on 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 Nabry. Nabry. He looked over his shoulder, saw Nabry. Ben White was trying to close the space faster than Nabry, which you can't do because he has he's yes. quicker than you. What he could do once he had seen the defensive line was to step Hold the line. Could have played him mm. offside. Once though, he had stayed, look, that no, I, I, I think because, no, no, no. because the two centre backs stood I'm there. Coming. They stood. They, they, yeah. the they were I'm holding the line. They were holding the line. His Coach. starting position, whites. Yes, whites starting position. wouldn't allow him to go. No, it was perfect. No, no. He, he was, was not in line with. He was not in line with. But he ran past them. He, he was behind them. What and I'm saying is that Nabri's diagonal. Yeah, Nabri's run was great. Compel him to play Nabri on. Yeah, because he was not in line with the centre backs at the time. He was not. If he so could if have he's in line, he sees, he stays. He stays. So, I don't, I don't because think, he was not in line. I don't think you get, I don't think you get my point. When Goretzka picked the ball, yes. Nabri and Ben White were almost retreating. Yes. So the two center backs were closer to go than he and Nabri. Uh-huh. Yeah. As he was running, when he reached the line, he went past, past his the two. line. Yeah, I'm that's, saying that's when he reached, that's what I'm saying that. You hold your... Normally, Charlie, mm, on the movement, he can't hold. It's elite. Oh, look, yeah. This is something we see. You see, this sound the things that me, I'm not really a big When you talk yeah. about the, the goat defenders, I don't put VVD there. But this is all the things that VVD <laughs> do. Is so is it, is it, and you see this thing and be like, oh, it's yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, normal. He, can do that. No. he can do that because yeah, he's a center. Back. Yeah. He, and he's a leader. In the moments when we've seen him do that, he doesn't necessarily take off. He gets ready, he he sees the line, gets ready to make the run and go with the player. Then he checks. So once he sees the player commit and get beyond then the line, he checks. He doesn't. But once the player takes off, and you, it is difficult to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, listen. So I'm uh, actually going to stay with you because um, we need to rush our moments. You know, no, not try. We need to wrap up on this. So then, okay. So that go go thing. Uh, Arsenal do, uh, you know, by a minute go on and get a second goal. Yeah. And it was a fantastic second goal. Started yeah. with Noah, a brilliant play from him. Get and, and then they get, Heroism, obviously. Yeah. Then the equalizer, another brilliant play, this time from Gabriel Jesus. Yeah. Great footwork. Yeah, uh, and, and and then the, the equalizer came in 2-0. Now, at that point, everyone thought, okay, you know what? 
Arsenal had put themselves in this great position, there was the opportunity for them to go in and get a third. The Saka incident happened. Yeah. Now, there's a buying incident as well. We'll get to that. But the Saka incident, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of debate on whether or not it should have been a penalty. Okay. What is your stand on that? Okay. Let's, let's, in this situation, yes. we have to take every, every, emotional bone, everything from your body. And look at it and let's objectively. Look at it very objectively. Okay. Forget what, because I've seen people resurface from Saka videos. Forget it. Forget his history. The fact that somebody is a liar doesn't mean he's, he's, he's it's always impossible lying. for him to tell the truth. <laughs> yes. So that one is, is let's take yes. that one out. No, no, Hala. It is true. Mm -hmm. Saka was looking for the penalty. Of course. He's an attacker. Yes. It's last minute. Yes. He has seen a goalkeeper, goalkeeper coming. Yes. Most attackers We'll look for the penalty. Mm -hmm. That's cool. We all see them do it. Mm -hmm. My point is, yes, Saka stuck a leg out. Yes. There are two angles you can look at it from. Yes. In fact, the TV and the VR angle look, gave us two. Mm -hmm. One from behind Saka and one from behind Noya. Noya. Mm. If you look at the one behind Saka, we all see Saka stretching his leg out. Yes. It's almost like he's doing that Ribery. Uh, we yes. saw him kicking Noah. We yes, saw him, saw him right. jumping. Jump jump he jumps. Jump 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 he jumps. 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 He flies. He sticks his right leg out. He jumps. He jumps. And then he catches Noah's foot. Yes. And then he goes down. He falls down. If you look at it from that angle, Saka, you a liar. Yes. <laughs> and honestly, you need better acting skills. True this story. thing, Robbie will sell it to us. Quick, quick. But then switch the angle. When you switch the angle. And watch Noya come And that's out. what I am looking at. That's right. And nobody <laughs> can tell you where to no, look. If you can't tell me what to look. You that's are looking right. at it from Saka's side. Right. Me, I'm looking at it from Noya's side. That's right. If you say Saka was looking for the thing, and okay. as you've seen players who have been booked for diving. Of course. The opposition player doesn't make any attempt to yes. impede them. Yes. They look for the contact, they find it and they fall. Yes. That, is a, that is a dive. Yes. When you look at it from Noya's angle, mm -hmm. behind Noya, mm -hmm. Noya sticks out his foot. He does. It is clear. Yes. He sticks out his foot. Mm -hmm. But because it's like Saka has overdone it. Yes. It's like, oh, we are looking at the two acting scenarios. Yes. Noya did it and did it well. Yes. Saka overdid it. Yes. So it looks like Saka is acting. Yes. But Noya did actually stick out his face. Yes. Yes. And it did great. So it's a case that, of two sinners. No, 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 no fence. Then it makes a point Noya, right, that I think it actually justifies why the referee doesn't give it. When you watch it from Saka's viewpoint, yes. you see something else. When you watch it from behind Noya, you see something else. But the referee's position is from behind Saka. No, yeah, but he also so had a chance so to see the No, no, no. Via 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 gave him both angles. No, Via 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 Put it in place before Sarkis. That is what no. I was yes. No, no, no. Look, yes. I think, yes. I think no, yes. I'm coming. Yes. Yeah, I'm coming. No, 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 no. Yes, no. 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 So, so, no. So, no. You're saying that no, no, no. Yes, no. no. Yes, no. Was planted. Listen, listen. Oh, listen. 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 No. Sarkis training no. leg. If you watch it, yes. Let me when just Sark, when look, the the yeah, no yes leg you. right foot movement happened when Saka shifted the ball to the left. Thank you. Then he moved his leg like any reaction of a defender trying to get it. He didn't get the ball. Uh -huh. So that is a chalking. No, wait, wait, wait. He wait, has wait, moved wait, his leg wait, wait, right wait, wait, when the guy was no, chalking. No, 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 no. It's different. It's different, different no, yes, if you are standing no, yes, there. No, yes, right. No, no yes. No, let's so that's a great coach. No, just, just a second. Just, go, just a second. No, yes, right leg that mm -hmm. he stuck out was as a result of Saka's initial touch. By the time Saka was going to move his right leg, that Noyes right leg that he had moved up because of Saka's touch was well, in place. Planted. So Saka's trailing leg, which moved, was so unnatural and was flying. <laughs> he flew into Noyes right leg that had been set out because of Saka's touch. And the left leg of Saka that touched the ball didn't catch Noyes. So, if so, that leg so, caught so, Noyes so, trailing so, leg, that's so fine. So fine. They say that's so how fine. they say that's how Saka so fine. The guy that like, so so like, so like, 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 <laughs> That's the point. You see, that's the point I was going to make. Oh, yeah. For that to be warded as a penalty. Noyes' right leg should have touched Saka's left leg. They that's shouldn't all. have touched his that's left leg. That's all, because like because, you said, because, no, if, the argument is, no. if the argument is that Noyes' leg actually extended, right, it has to make contact with, with the left. 
No, no, it doesn't have to, to make so. girl contact. No, 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 Yes, you yes. cannot avoid it from the other angle. Okay. Okay. From the other angle, the significant contact came yes. from the lawyer. Okay, I'm not going to back. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> now, 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 that is Arsenal's claim for a penalty. <laughs> Why had they all slow go there? Uh, uh, that that's what you should do. That's what that one. Why was you let me relax? Let me kill the fire before you start. No, 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 no. Let me kill. Let me kill let the fire before you start. Introduce them. See, hey. the people who are watching, they all watch the match. They know you don't need to introduce them. Okay, Boga, you watch football. You watch football. Yes. You watch football. Okay. You've watched more football than all of, all us, of us combined. combined. What is the problem? In football, we've seen this thing happen every, even in the Arsenal Bayern game, it happened. Uh -huh. Corner kick, Saka put the ball down. He went back, they say, he went back, touched the ball, went back and kicked it. We see players touch the ball time and time and time and time again. Referees, and if you see, when you, when you listen to uh, the UEFA, they have this referees conference. Yeah, panel, before, yeah, the panel. Thank you. Before every season. I think it was about four, the season that Liverpool won the Champions League. After that, they, when we were going to the... There was this ref who said something very important. Uh -huh. He said the ref, not always strictly according to the rules, but the ref was setting protocols. And it's about application of common sense. If... Which is popularly known look, as Law 18. Thank you. Common I, sense. Look, I it's promise in the law. you, if Raya had touched the ball, giving it to Gabriel, uh, uh, Bayern players had entered the box and were coming to press and Gabriel touched it, it he would have a, given a foul. True, true. That's application true, of common sense. True, true. He's assessing the scenario. You, you are outside the box. I pass the ball to my friend. Gabriel can turn around and do jangly, 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 jangly. <laughs> you will not come. Yes. Then he touches the ball and restarts it. Still, you've not come and you say you want penalty for that situation. Yeah. Boga, let's not spoil this is that, no, 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 would the referee use common sense and say that there's no danger? So if the Viraya, hold on. If the Viraya does it, is it which one? It's a back pass from Declan. Bayern Munich yeah. are 20 yards from Arsenal's okay. uh, uh, final third. He makes a back pass. Why did he give you an indirect? Would the referee because say Okay. Would the referee give indirect? Okay. Would the referee give indirect? Yes, how is the response to that? He doesn't catch that. He attempts to play. The danger is different. The risk is different. No, he could mistake it. And he gets into that. He could. No, no, no. My question was simple. My question was simple. Declan Rice passes the ball to David Raya. Yes. Bayern Munich players are 20 yards away from... I, I heard you. And Raya picks up the ball. Yes. Is that an indirect or not? He will give an indirect. Oh, you know yeah. why? Why? I'm saying that the risk of kicking the ball is not the same as the risk of picking it up. So he's supposed to kick it. No, he's supposed to kick it, no? Yes, with the leg. Exactly, but yes. he catches it. Yes. And I'm saying that, which is safer, kicking or catching? No, no, no. It depends. No, no, I'm asking it depends. A question. No, it depends. No, no, it's not about what's safer. No, 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 it's safer. Has he infringed? You see? He the reason why I think, listen. Yes. The reason why I think the excuse yes. for the referee that it's a schoolboy, then take it to no, the No, 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 wait, wait. Ask for, that, ask for that one. Ask for that no, one. No. We have to ask. Let me give five seconds to address this matter. No, but I love the situation. Did you listen to the post match press conference? From Tukil. Did you hear the referee's voice? No, that's what Tukil said. Tukil said. His player said, said, the yes. referee said, yes. listen no. Yes. Toko said, yes. my player said, said the, the referee, referee said, said yes. this is his mistake. Okay, this season, we saw Klopp, hey, get, 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 get. <laughs> they finished, they went to ask him. He said the referee said something. It was some serious matter. What did PG, Omel, M, what did they go do? <laughs> they went to listen to tape. <laughs> yes. He said they didn't hear anything. Point is, coaches can lie. Fair they enough. can lie for the advantage. Fair point. I didn't hear fair point. from the referee. But if the referee said, give your player referee said, and he, the referee said, no, fair me point. too, Ateta told okay. me that. The referee said that. It's not a foul. Okay, fair That's point. All. But what I'm saying is simple. <laughs> what I'm saying is simple. You see, when a, when a game is... You are saying is, that. Strictly applying the law. Yes. You see, it should be for it's humble. Yeah. Because, because... For I, me, I, yeah. I, that is, that an example that there was a corner and if he wants uh, Odiga touching the ball mm -hmm. in those sequence, Odiga will put his hand up. Let the referee know that the ball is not in the place that can't take it. Referee has blown the whistle. But the position of the ball, you can't take it. You want yes. to reposition it. 
your hand goes up. There are rules to these but things. But no, no, but Daniel also don't. But, but, but Gabriel, Daniel Gabriel, Gabriel the Friend. game is in play. Friend. Ball comes no, no. to Gabriel in a, at an angle that he doesn't want. Friend. He decides to tag the ball and he sends the ball to an yes. angle that makes it comfortable. You're telling me it is okay. So, hold, but, but hold on. I have a question for you. You also know that in the strict application of the laws yeah. by the referees, there is an actual law that allows the referees to use common sense. And that wasn't common sense. Ah, A player has picked up the ball in play. You're telling me... So you're saying... No, he's so saying it. no, he's not. The common sense application here is that he, in the mind of the referee, yes. he gives a penalty in that incident and it makes no sense because in his view, what happened Gives by by Munich were in no position whatsoever to benefit from Gabriel. No, but friends, that kicking point, that point. Friends, that point is moot because how many times have we seen players and teams being awarded penalties for fouls that had that did not take any advantage away from the attacking? How? Team? How? Like, give how? me a scenario. Give me a scenario. Of, give me a scenario. Off the top of my, I cannot remember any now. But that's I'm because, because it's no, not. It, no, not true. Friends, it it because if it's a handball, friends. it's either the ball, the hand is stretched friends. out, and it would have friends. gone to an opposition friends. player. Even with the handball rule, so even with the handball rule, yes. how many times? You get the last bite on this. Two things. Yes. The thing truth be told, it was a penalty. It's a penalty. handball. It's a penalty. Handball. Okay. Penalty. Why? Okay. Did the referee blow his whistle? Yes, game was in play. The game was in session. Gabriel had no right whatsoever to take the ball. To what, have done the kids? Yes. what he did. But okay. me personally, I was happy the referee didn't give it. Because if you look at the level of the game, you expect no, 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 you expect no, no, high I level would, players. No, 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 no. I would, I would, I would, I would agree with the kiss mistake. Listen, well. no sense. Listen no. I'm saying it's a penalty. But if the referee had given it, I would have been saddened that Bayam went through that means to win the game. So, so but, then, but, but common that, sense. So no. then. Common sense I application. The common sense application. Thank you. No, That's all we're saying. Like nobody said that it wasn't a fence. No, we're not saying it's not a fence. All of us say it's, it's a humble. Fence. But we are saying that the referee no, was no. right. Not so that he used the common you see, sense application. Let me ask this question. So we are saying it's a humble. It's a clear humble. A keeper is passing the ball to Gabriel. In this case, the ball didn't go across the turf. It went high like Noyes Tutas. He kicks the ball. Gabriel is trying to drop the ball. And he hits the hand in the box. And there's no opposition player around. Will you use that same common sense? Yeah, it's not, that's not, that one is not a foul. No, that, that one is not a foul. But that one is not a foul. It's from his from own your own player. player your, your, it's, it's not, not a foul. It's not going to that. So, no, no. Wait, hey, 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 wait, 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 wait. Uh. Your player is playing the ball. Mm-hmm. And then you've used your hand to control the ball. It's a foul. It's not a foul because a your foul. own player played it to you. It's no, a foul. I'm you saying you kicked the ball. I'm saying that. You see, Manon Noyes, the way he started the attack, the ball didn't go across the ground. It went high. So you expect the player to drop. So let's say Raya is passing the ball to Gabriel, who has gone wide on the edge of the box. And then the ball is not across the turf. So he kicks the ball. Gabriel has to chest it. With Normally it, with the it. referee. And then Gabriel, there's no opposition player around Sijo. him. I get it. And then Gabriel controls the ball with the hand. Sijo, is it in, answering that, yeah. in answering that, if that is in the box, the referee will not give it as a penalty. Why? He won't give I mean, but, that's but, why but the same the same common sense. You know what we are doing? This habit that the referees can use their discretion even when the laws are clear. No, it's it's a, what is the clarity of the law on that handball situation? It's that is humble. Humble. No, no, no. It was the humble. Deliberate It was deliberate. 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 What you are essentially doing is that the referees... How I wish, pa? How I wish, pa, the AFCON final. AFCON final, pa. Ghana will be in the final. Yes. This one is not written for you. Yes. It is a proper goalkeeper. Yes. yes. Who will pass the, the ball, ball to Jiku? Jiku will do it. Jiku is done. 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 That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Apu. That's it for today's episode. Of okay, go on. I'm not serious. That is really Your own comments. Your own comments on the scenario and everything we spoke about. Leave them in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And put the notification bell on so when we upload new episodes, you will. Uh, you'll be the first to see it. It's been a pleasure. Once again, we're back again next Friday with a new episode. Until then, cheers. Mm-hmm.